Are you looking to build a VCF lab or VMware Cloud Foundation lab but don't actually have enough hardware? This tutorial may just be for you. So the biggest challenge with VCF is the fact that it actually requires four minimum servers to set it up. Generally not a big requirement in uh, the enterprise, but if you want to play with it at home, it may be a bit of a stretch. So today I'm going to teach you or walk you through how exactly to build it up in a single server in a nested environment. I hope you guys have already checked out this particular site, uh, deep dive into VMware Cloud Foundation, building a nested lab. So from here, you can actually get quite a bit of details of how you can set it up using VLC. Um, it's got enough information here to get you started, but most importantly, um, you've got to hit this link. So it brings you to this particular page where you fill up your address and then you get the VLC bundle to help you out. Okay, so I've obviously downloaded it and extracted it. Uh, so in this folder, you will see a whole bunch of stuff. I also still have our PDF guide that's fairly detailed. On top of it, it's got a couple of JSON files that will help you through and you will probably need to make some edits to that. So let's have a quick look at that PDF. This is the particular PDF. It's, it's kept quite up to date in general, uh, but just want to kind of flag the basic install and the requirements. So you need quite a fairly large server to do this, right? Uh, based on my setup, it took about 192 gigs of RAM thereabouts. Uh, and effectively, that's one of the big challenges with setting up a VCF lab is the hardware. Um, and then you also need to set up a jump box. So the jump box in the form of a Windows server because we will be using Power CLI to run some of these uh, commands. So you need to prep the box and you need to run a couple of execution policy bypass and these two particular lines effectively. And on top of that, you will need to get this stuff here. Like I said, you will get that bundle. Um, you got to have an ESXi ISO image ready and also download the OVF tool. I've already all got all this stuff prepared, so it should be fairly straightforward. Okay, let's have a quick look at the JSON file. Obviously, you can get a JSON editor if you want to, um, but for now, I have left it as a normal uh, notepad. So you can just kind of go through and make changes to the IP addresses if you want. If you like, you could actually just keep it as it is. The only thing that you probably need to fill up, it's the insert license keys, uh, and it's kind of peppered all over the document here. So it's got a whole bunch here, okay? So I've already prepped mine there, and we're all set. So here you see um, the VLC GUI. So we're just going to run that PowerShell. Just let it load. So it, as it spins up, it for me at least, it spins up this little error here. I've never really bothered too much about it because it seemed to still work. So um, if you have the chance to kind of look into it um, and you find out what it is, do let me know. Uh, alternatively, let's coming back to this, you will then see three options. Uh, there's obviously I build it, build it for me, an expansion pack. So I will build it like the name suggests, uh, builds up, you will need to build the DNS, NTP, and DHCP server. Uh, likewise, they build it for me. All these services are built and spun up as part of the Cloud Builder app. Okay, uh, so with 391, uh, they spin up another additional service. So they spin up a router with uh, BGP pairing as well. So expansion pack is more of after as and when you bring it up, then you actually want to add additional nodes. This is where it spins up a whole bunch of um, nested VMs or nested ESXIs. So let's fill up some of the uh, details of vCenter, my existing vCenter where I'm going to be hosting um, these nested VMs. Once you fill it up, uh, just click connect uh, and it should connect to vCenter and pull down some cluster details like you can see here. So this, uh, I'll just pick default cluster, uh, VM network and the data store. Okay, so I'll click build it for me. And now I'll need to fill up details on domain, uh, management networks, etc, etc. So just give me a minute.
So as you can see, I'll fill up the full domain name, uh, put in the IP address or the uh, management network CIDR. I'm not too sure if we caught it in my JSON file earlier, so I've left it as a 10 dot network. Uh, and management gateway all points to the Cloud Builder appliance, part because, like I said, you know we were going to put uh, router services, uh, DNS, and everything else on the Cloud Builder appliance for this use case. Obviously, it's prompting for the Cloud Builder um, OVA location, ESXi ISO. You can put whatever prefix that you want it to be. But uh, just a point to note, uh, host and um, Cloud Builder password, it needs to be eight characters. So um, just this is the usual password that we always put. And the last point here is VCF EMS JSON file. So uh, just put that JSON file earlier that you have edited with the license keys. Just plonk it here. And this few other stuff. So obviously we click internal services, do the bring up. And if you want it to be all flash, click that. Otherwise, don't. So when you're ready, just go construct. And it would just scroll through a whole bunch of stuff and then start spinning up um, the VMs. So if you go to vCenter here, let's see if you can see anything. It's not yet. Now there it goes. It starts appearing. So it's creating the VMs. If you expand task, you will see it reconfiguring the VMs. And as it boots, it gives and updates the status here. So I'll let it run for a bit. It, the process usually takes between two and a half hours to three hours. Uh, and, and mind you, this is a nested environment. So that's pretty good for that time. So you can see, um, for whatever reason, um, I have this deploy OVF template for the Cloud Builder. Uh, was cancelled by user and it spits out a whole bunch of errors. So I've actually had this a few times. Um, I, it's funny because it worked the first time, it subsequently just didn't work. Um, but having said that, no issues there. What I've successfully done was to deploy it manually. So if you go deploy OVF, and you pick the Cloud Builder app. Okay. We just name it exactly the same as required. And get finished. Um, so it will start to deploy the OVF now and hopefully it works. Okay, so it successfully um, loaded the OVF. So I've also subsequently powered it on. So you can see it's completely booted up, ready to go. So Let's go back to PowerCLI so you can see it's starting to do something here. Um, it's funny because I think part of the script's kind of broken and the OVF didn't load properly. So you don't actually see the time spent and total time time left um, and the status generally of the CLI. So what we can do is you can actually log in to Cloud Builder based on that IP up there. So let's see. You can go next. Let's go next. Go next. You can upload the parameter file that we created earlier. Go next. And this validation screen, you can go click cancel.
So what tends to happen here, if you reload this screen, it actually gives you the status. Okay. So you can see here uh, where we are at. We've kind of successfully created port group for VMs. Um, and you can come back to the screen anytime and see what's happening. So this is a slight workaround. But effectively, this whole Cloud Builder app is also the same app uh, in a real-life environment where you start to do a bring up of not a nested one, of course, but a real life environment. This is what you do. But uh, here you can, just for the sake of the nested lab, you can kind of track it. So it seems like it's done. So let's kind of scroll through a little bit. Everything seems to be good. Um, deployment successful. So let's click next. Let's launch a CDC manager. Here we go. And there you have it, the familiar screen of VCF. So you can set a backup if you want to. So for now, I'll just go click no. But otherwise, you have your own VCF lab. Hopefully that's been useful for you guys. So do check out the other tutorials and videos on the channel and uh, leave a comment and subscribe.